So speaking of that, um, you know, I know that you did eventually marry, you know, an Indian tradition. Can you talk, you know, kind of about that? And I also want you to kind of touch on our childhoods and how that kind of plays a part in our, you know, females as we get married. Yeah, yeah, definitely plays a huge part. Um, so I, you know, so I, so again, like everything my parents stood for, I wanted the opposite of that. Um, <laughs> but a part of me was still scared of them. Not that they were going to abuse me physically again, but I felt like they were in control of part of me or they had power and control over like subconsciously some part of me. And as much as I really wanted to not conform, not care about their their values or opinions or religious beliefs, and but, but a part of me did <laughs> because I was still seeking their validation. Yeah. And I only realized that after I went through this whole marriage crisis that I'm like, wow, why do I keep seeking their validation? Like I, there, there's that, that hold was so strong that whatever I did in life, I felt like, oh, they're going to be proud of me now. And then they're going to start being nicer to me and, or, or they're going to love me more because I've achieved all of these things. And it just never happened. Right. It was always kind of like, oh, that's great. Now you can uh, focus on the next level. I'm like, can I just enjoy the bullet for a second? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> next level is like way down the line. Um, so, um, yeah, so I ended up, so they wanted me to marry, you know, they wanted me to have a traditional uh, arranged marriage, South Indian, you know, Brahmin, all, the whole, uh, you know, 100% there. And I, I allowed them, like, okay, well, I'll meet people who you find, not that I'm going to settle on that. And really nothing worked out. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to find someone on my own. And in my, like, my conscious brain was telling me, like, yeah, you need to find someone that's totally, like, not even Indian. <laughs> um just to kind of get out of this the cycle yeah yeah but then i you know the other part which is a the larger subconscious part like well you're gonna have to deal with your parents for the rest of your life and they're probably gonna disown you yeah <laughs> yeah um so like why don't we just stick with you know indian but maybe not south indian so i went with north indian <laughs> <laughs> oh I, really okay yeah, yeah. So okay my husband, yeah my soon-to-be ex is, uh, is north indian and i thought i was being a total rebel <laughs> <laughs> and um what ended up happening was yeah so we had the whole his parents my parents are like blah 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 like oh she's from the u.s so he's from india and he he came when he was in college mm -hmm. um and he wasn't the typical um uh, Indian guy that that was from India so I thought he was different um, and he knew I was different because I was not going to be one of those traditional Indian housewives that gave up my life for my husband after we get married and things like that yeah and so we met and then we're like oh yeah you know like let's let's get this to work um, and it was okay for a while and actually what ended up happening was after the marriage my parents and him became very close wow. probably like a lot closer than I was with my parents <laughs> so it was almost like I attracted him to my parents versus me <laughs> wow and I caught on to that very quickly and was like you guys can just live happily as like one big happy family kind of like leave me out of it <laughs> because they they have a need to they, they want to feel needed okay and I was always so independent and kind of a rebel that I always gave them the feeling of like, I don't really need you guys. Like I have my own life now. Yeah. I have my own money. I have a job. I can take care of myself. I can make my own decisions. Like I am a grown up adult. And they were kind of like, no, no, no. Like you got to listen to us and you need us. And you got to, you know, we, we are parents and you need our, you, you need your parents. I'm like, well, I don't need a parent. I don't need to be parented. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he kind of, I think innately had that need because he was a lot more traditional than I thought he was. Okay. <laughs> um, and he had a very different relationship with his parents who, who were actually like, he had a great childhood yeah. from what I um, know and what I've witnessed. But I think his, ish, his um, lack was that they were just not very, um, Attentive. they didn't show love, I, okay. I think, you know, cause they were also in India and, you know, in India, they, didn't, they don't really like show, they don't really say things like, oh, well, we love you. 
um, give you know give hugs and things like that. And he was also the middle child, so I think he had the whole middle child syndrome going. Got on. it. And I think when he met my parents, and then you know once they kind of got over the the you know oh my gosh they're getting married part, then they both bonded because my parents would be like oh we're you know do you want us to bring food? He's like, yeah, yeah, bring food. <laughs> and like, oh, do you want us to come to help take care of the children for you? Like, yeah, 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 come on over anytime. And I was like, hey, what a second. <laughs> like, we need to take care of our own kids. We don't need food from them. We can make our own food. And I, you know, I was trying to be, you know, hey, we need to establish our own boundaries. Yeah. You know, and th- there's no boundaries in, in the Indian system. Okay. It's like everyone's, because they all live together in India, yeah. joint families. So they really attracted each other and that kind of led to a lot of um, friction and conflict between us because I'm here like, you know, raised in this country, a lot more independent. I'm like, hey, we got to do this on our own. We can use their help as needed, but we shouldn't be like so codependent on them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think he had a need to be codependent and they had a need to be codependent on me but yeah. then i wasn't giving it to them they're like hey well hey he looks like her husband's like all on board with that <laughs> wow so now i'm having to kind of break all of these cycles and you know from from all of them like wow there there was so much unhealthy dependencies going on here that we i need to kind of be the person everyone's gonna hate me but hey you know i gotta do i gotta finally look you know look at my own needs and break all of these cycles. A hundred percent. How long were you married for? 13 years. So we wow. technically are still married. We're going through the whole um, divorce process. So yeah. Probably by next year, it would be 14, 14 years. That yeah. We've been married in about 16 years that we've known, known each other. Awesome. Awesome. I want to say a quick hello to those of you that are watching live. We appreciate it. If this subject resonates with anybody that you know, please feel free to share the link. Um, I want to ask you, um, this was very interesting for me when you and I first originally talked like a long, long time ago, you were kind of talking about how your parents set you up for marriage or didn't set you up for marriage. Um, I kind of want you to talk about that because this, this was so interesting to me on two wavelengths. One, I didn't, um, I didn't, what is that called when like you empathize with you? Empathize, sympathize, empathize. I didn't empathize with you, but then On the other hand, I thought about it and I'm like, wait a minute, same, but like, didn't view it as a tradition, kind of just didn't happen. Like no one taught me. So I kind of want you to dive in on the tradition and, um, you know, how you kind of navigated through, you know, your role as a wife, your, you know, the control you had and, um, you know, your parents kind of setting you up. Sure. I mean, yeah. So it, it, um, I mean, the positive ways that they set me up was like, okay, you gotta get a job. You gotta, you know, have your own living, um, and, and kind of do good in the world by being successful in your career. So that was the good part. Um, now the part that I feel like I was set up for failure was that my, my dad managed my money, you know, until I got married. And I never really uh, asked to manage my own money. I mean, I had like my own pot of money that, that I, you know, for daily household expenses, but you know, all investments and stocks and really the whole, you know, business side of just living, my dad took care of all that. And not even once did they say, hey, hey, Jyothi, we're, we're gonna set you up for success in life. You gotta know how to balance your checkbooks. You gotta know how to do, you know, um, investments and grow your money. This is how you do it. And we're going to now give ownership to you, you know, and, and teach you how to, like, none of that happens. Um, and, and then, you know, just other things that my, that my mom could have taught me. Okay, you know, here's how to kind of basically survive on your own. Like, you know, here's how you do the laundry. Here's how you, you know, can cook like quick meals. And I think she, she felt like she, she was trying. But then, again, my mom and I, you know, I, I just kept, I, I just wanted to kind of get out of her hair or 
not be in, you know, visibility mode. <laughs> so because we never, I never knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I never got those lessons. Now, when I got married, um, you know, once they got over the whole oh, North Indian thing, um, they then, my dad then thought of him as like a son. So, right. So he was kind of like, oh, okay, we're going to now hand over all of your money to him so he can manage it for you, which I didn't even know happened. <laughs> wow. And, and he did, you know, he did manage it, but it then became just become a, a I kind of became like a commodity, right? It's like, oh, I'm being transferred from one uh, set of c power and control tactics to another set of power and control tactics. Yep. And then, you know, you know, my ex was also like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna, you know, you don't need to know about what I'm doing with the money because I got it under control. And hey, you, you have a decent life. And, you know, it's not like we're, it's not like I lost all the money or something like that. So I kind of built that trust with him too. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I don't really need to know this stuff, you know, and I gave all, you know, he managed like all the money, like the, wow. all the business side of, of the marriage. And I think that's where my parents really set me up for failure. Um, I mean, later on, they're like, oh, well, we didn't know you did that. I'm like, really? <laughs> I mean, not once did you question it. <laughs> um, so that, that's one part. I think the other part was also just um, the Indian mentality of, well, the wife is there to support the husband. Got it. So you can't really outshine him. Got it. And, you know, I, I was a cybersecurity leader, but then last year um, I started really getting into the wellness. Um, I started my own wellness practice because of, there's a whole big healing journey that I did on the wellness side after my third baby was born. But, you know, that's a whole different um, topic. Okay. But, but I, you know, learned all of these healing modalities and holistic wellness um, practices and I started my own practice and I wrote my books. I, you know, I like I really wanted to like, okay, wow, you know, one day I'm gonna leave cyber and kind of, you know, branch out and do all of these other things. Yeah. And at some point I think it, it became obvious like, oh, I was like I had a path and I had a mission. And then it became a competition thing with with my ex. It's like, whoa, wow. whoa, like, okay, if you become so successful, you don't need me anymore. And I'm like, I never really needed you <laughs> for money. He's like, oh, no, no, you, you need it. You need me. You can't live without me kind of thing. I'm like, oh, pretty sure I can. And um, wow, coming from a very traditional Indian parents, if they hadn't seen like the the true colors from him, I it would have been like a slam dunk. Oh, Jyoti, like you are the cause of the demise of your marriage. It's all your fault you need to try i mean actually they did say that to us up, up to a certain point like oh you need to fix this like you need to stop having dreams and visions like just have a normal job take care of your kids take care of your husband and you know forget about all the stuff like do all these things after the kids are in college you know like 20 years down the line wow <laughs> um and that's kind of like the mentality that and even after they saw everything that went on with you know um the divorce part, even then my dad is like, you know, and, and this is, this is one thing that he said that I still, I'm not, I, I'm still processing this. It's like, well, you know, um, your communication skills are, are your strength, but they're also your weakness. And I'm like, well, how is that a weakness? Well, because you can come off as being very intimidating. So basically you need to kind of, you know, lower yourself a little bit so Got that you can kind of meet the standards of, the wow. person you're with and maybe other people and i'm like wow you want me to lower oh. myself to be at the same level as you know the person i'm with currently or or wow. anybody else and instead of telling me like hey you know you're up here maybe the other person needs to up level themselves yeah yeah right so yeah so those are all and you know and even now you know i i'm regarded as the rebel child who's very rude and disrespectful you know, who's arrogant or doesn't really conform. <laughs> and and they wanted me to apologize for all of these things. I'm like, I am not going to apologize. <laughs> you know, that's, awesome. if that's your perception. That's your perception. I have my own perception. And I hadn't really put that out there and only until recently where yeah. this is how I really felt about you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. So Can you talk about the um, the turning point in your marriage? I mean, that's you were married for a really long time. Was there like a definitive thing or things that happened? There was. Um, 
you know, I, I really, I think it was the pandemic was a blessing in disguise um, because it really showed mm -hmm. people's true, true colors, whether it's in, whether it's in a marriage or friends or family. You know, I think, you know, you're put to the test, and either you're gonna become stronger together through the crisis, or you're just gonna break apart. Yeah. Um, and I feel like if your foundation was built on like you know glass and not brick stones, you broke apart. Hundred um, percent. So it really shed a lot of light in our marriage, but also relationship with my parents. And oh. so it's been kind of a long couple years to really understand like the the roots of how far it goes back. Okay. Um, and I think even from the marriage, right from the beginning, I was putting my own needs and my own self worth down. Yeah. Um, because I was kind of putting him on a pedestal. And it's funny because whoever saw that is now like, yeah, we were wondering why you're doing that. <laughs> really? Right? I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me? Like, well, would you have listened? I mean, we, because, you know, it's like, why are you taking this from him? And why do you think like you're lesser than him? Like you're kind of being this, like a, it's like a disposable item over here. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, wow. Like, so it's just recently hit me like, wow, like uh, this goes back like before him, like this goes back all the way to my childhood where I did feel disposed. I feel, I, I did feel unworthy. You know, I did feel unloved or, or I felt like, oh, my worth was predicated on my grades or like what I had to do to conform. Got it. And so now I feel like I'm kind of breaking out of my cocoon here and be like, okay, you know what? I need to like stop being scared of all, you know, of not conforming. Um, and I know it's going to raise a lot of, you know, shuffle a lot of feathers over here because, you know, we have family all around the world. And I know, you know, my parents are like, oh my gosh, what are they going to think? And I'm like, you know what? I really don't give a crap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they want to conform and pretend to be happy, that's on them. But I'm, yeah. I can only take so much and it's time that I kind of bring my voice and I would have, I don't think I've, I would have ever had this podcast, you know, a couple of years ago. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I can't, can't say anything. Yeah. And what if somebody hears it and they're going to, and then, you know, that's going to cause a lot of disruption. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I, um, I want to ask, what do you think is, um, or do you think there are a large amount of individuals that do what you kind of mentioned in the beginning of our podcast where you were saying or not beginning, but you were saying that you feel as if you kind of picked your partner for your parents. Do you think that that's something that me, we as females kind of do often? So I think just based on what I've been learning through all my healing modalities is there's a part of you, there's always a part of you that attracts people into your life. Um, now, if you're attracting positive people, then that, you know, that they're getting attracted to that positive traits within you or, or the positive um, feelings. But then if you're attracting kind of not so, or maybe I would call it learning experiences <laughs> into your life um, with people that maybe aren't so positive, then there's a part in, there's something within you that attracted that to you. Yeah. So I think that part of me was the feeling of unworthiness, um, not really, val you know, valuing myself, my own needs, kind of putting myself down. Um, and then when I attracted him, um, I was looking for something very specific at that time. Like I was looking for someone who's just kind of open-minded lets me be me but i didn't even know maybe who i was because i was still got kind of it reaching out um and i and a part of me wanted that feeling of being like protected because i felt like oh no one protected me in my childhood you know i feel like my dad was trying but as a male figure i'm like well you could have done a better job <laughs> mm -hmm. you know when you know if, if there's a male abuser then it's different because a female can might not, you know, be able to stand up. Yeah. And mine was different. So, and I get it now. I'm like, okay, you, he did the best he could given the skills and the situation, you know, but I always had that feeling, oh, like I wasn't protected. And, you know, when I met 
my, you know, when I had my exes and, um, you know, my, my, my husband, I, I kind of felt like, oh, okay, well, he seems like a, a person that that's going to protect me, you mm-hmm. know, and, and not abuse me at least mm-hmm. physically. Yeah. Um, so, so my standards are very low. <laughs> Got it. So again, you know, I kind of attracted very low standards and I, and I kept putting myself down. So every time I would have like these, see these red flags in them, I would kind of make excuses for them. Like, oh, well, that that's just, that's, that's not a big deal. Like that's just because he, he's, he, he had this experience or he did that. And then I would just kind of keep crossing those things off my own needs. Like, well, it's okay. I can meet my own needs and I don't need him for that. Got uh, so, it. Right? Okay. So, until enough is enough one day and you're like, oh my gosh, like I, why did I do that? And then as you start, and I think that's what happened last year. It's like, I started kind of up leveling myself. Like I started healing, you know, more parts of me that I felt were broken yeah, or, or weaknesses. Yeah, and then yeah. I kept getting more and more confidence in myself. Like, Hey, I got this. Like, I don't need someone. It's nice to have him. And I wanted him as a, you know, as an equal partner. Yeah. But then I also started asking for more of my needs to be met. Yeah. And I think it came to a certain point where it's like, whoa, like you have all of these needs now. I'm like, <laughs> like, well, <laughs> and it's like, oh, and you need me to meet them. I'm like, no, I'm meeting my own needs. And I don't need you for money. I don't need you for, you know, love. I don't need you for anything. But yeah. we're married. So, you know, there's, it's like you, you would want the other person to kind of meet you where you're at yeah. and, you know, support each other. Yeah. Mentally so think, and emotionally. In, in all ways right yeah. and i think when that became kind of a competition thing it's like what like why is he thinking i'm like his competition like we're we're together in this like if i succeed you succeed yeah <laughs> you know and if you succeed i succeed but i think you know so i think as you heal parts of yourself like your other relationships start changing yeah um and then it could change for the better because the other person's like whoa okay she's up leveling oh let me also up level or they could kind of be like an immature uh, masculine or feminine be like, oh my gosh, she's up leveling. Let me try to like pull her down. Pull her down. Wow. So that, right. And that's kind of what ended up happening. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. And and I feel like that the same thing happened with my parents too. Like when they kind of start helping out, they're like, oh, we're the heroes now. So she's going to go, she's going to now realize how much she needs us. Got it. And then I'm like, no, like you are kind of the cause of this. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> played a big role. You weren't, I mean, you weren't the cause because he has to uh, take responsibility as well. Yeah. Yeah. But you played a huge role. Yeah. And I now realize, like, whoa, I need to like set my boundaries for my life moving forward. Absolutely. So that and I'm not going from one power person to another power person and back to the to my family as a power person. You know, I'm like, I need to be, I need to take, you know, internal power and control of myself Absolutely. and my own life and Absolutely. really start healing those parts so that I don't attract, you know, any more uh, power players, as, as, as we call it. Yeah. 